Let's make the diagnosis by simple basic medicine. A, geographic considerations. You've already told me that it's more widespread than we thought. Are there some areas where it's more likely to be Lyme than others? Well, yes, according to the studies that are out there, that is true. However, unfortunately, um, many researchers feel that, the, that Lyme disease is actually far more widespread than the map shows, and they are doing research um, in the South, for example, uh, looking at the fact that it, perhaps it might be the Lone Star tick that is actually carrying it. There's been research done by uh, Kerry Clark at the University of North Florida in, in this area. So I don't think we can limit it, but yes, there are what's called high incidence states. That's the term that the CDC Tends uses. Tends to be, right now at least, northern tier, northeast, yes. spreading west. Yeah, there's about 14 or, or so states. Now, what, there's another thing. There's we, one interesting disparity yeah. when you look at human studies versus dogs. Yes. With dogsandticks.com, you see different geographical patterns. For instance, uh, Colorado has a lot of dogs that are infected with Lyme disease, but people aren't. So it doesn't exactly make sense that maybe the veterinary statistics are more accurate than human statistics. Or maybe people are getting missed. Yes. Or maybe the dogs are overdiagnosed, but that being said. Or maybe said, the dogs are invading an area that humans maybe they're just don't just really go to. Right. Because um, dogs are always in the brush. Yes. But that being said, I, I just want to nail this before we go further. We've got geographic considerations. Mm -hmm. We've got some veterinary considerations. If you want to make this diagnosis without the blood test for a moment, right. you've got to do a history and a physical. And what are you going to right. find? Right. Well, they're, they're, in keeping with that question, um, it involves the art of medicine and judgment, clinical judgment. And you're, you're using risk factors for exposure. Those risk factors for exposure involve travel or location within a high-risk environment, recognizing that you can still contract the disease in low-risk environments, but, but it is a risk stratification. You're exposing yourself to habitat that is high risk, grassy areas, low brush, that type of walking through the backyard. Uh, Mind you, I'm then, not coming to your house anytime right, soon. That's right. <laughs> um, and then you have a clinical presentation that's what I'm that is to. consistent with the disease. Now, the, the challenge with that is, as Packner has said, this is the new great imitator. And, that all, and it is also felt to be a neurotropic condition. Neurotropism means the nervous system, it's drawn to the nervous system. So that, for example, in the chronic fatigue syndrome paper that I published, there were frequently chronic fatigue is one of the most common clinical presentations uh, of the condition that's not been treated, and frankly, in some that have been treated, but that's another set of issues we'll get to. Um, arthralgias, frank arthritis in a migratory sense, uh, uh, pattern very often, so it goes from one joint to another with or without inflammation. Um, the uh, nervous system, whether it be neuropsychiatric, cognitive, autonomic nervous system is very often uh, involved. What I mean by that is that's the part of the nervous system that controls unconscious function, so blood pressure control when moving from a lying to a standing position. Sleep, fractured non-restorative sleep is a very common uh, phenomenon. So you look at the complex with which an individual is presenting, you look at the risk factors for that individual's exposure, Tests may be supportive, but not required because they're relatively insensitive. If you'll forgive me, though. I'll a go key, ahead. A key thing with any medical diagnosis is pattern recognition. You do That's a thorough assessment, you take right. a thorough history, you do, a th you do the old-fashioned medical school review of systems. Right that we were taught to do that's boring and tedious, and that's how you have to do it. But if I believe him, the review of systems for Lyme is essentially positive. No, no, I, do, I, do, I ask uh, over 300 questions whenever I see a Lyme patient. I look at, and I look at each one with their baseline or course of illness, and I have to do a very thorough review of systems, and you see a certain pattern that evolves. It's a multisystemic illness that can evolve over time. There aren't too many multisystemic illnesses like this, so you look at what other pattern does it correlate with, Every other thing in medicine, you do thorough workup and review of systems. You don't just rely on one piece of evidence, just one lab test. And why should Lyme be an exception? But you know, we, we're talking about a very broad spectrum here. We're, uh, my, my colleagues are talking about people who are very ill for a long period of time, 
have symptoms that have somehow evaded prior clinicians. There are other people, on the other hand, who present with erythema migraines. That's pretty obvious. Now, you can't, you know, you can't use that as the gold standard, as you pointed out, but that's pretty obvious. If somebody comes in with a facial palsy in an endemic area, your index of suspicion is very high. That is something that is reversible with antibiotics relatively quickly, a, a, a lymphocytic meningitis in the proper setting. These are all obvious things. A heart block that progresses from first to second to third degree block in front of your very eyes, there's, I don't know of anything else that does that. And that's also potentially very uh, responsive to antibiotics relatively quickly. Then you move on from, and, and of course, arthritis, the, the monoarthritis, it's not very painful, but has a very large effusion, and um, that's quite often Lyme disease in the proper setting, in the proper geographic setting, in the proper uh, individual setting. And then we move on to all these less well-defined, very troublesome, very difficult to identify a cause symptoms, and there, the index of suspicion has to be high enough for you to actually say, well, I don't know that this is Lyme disease, but if it is, I want to make sure that this person is treated. And so we've all seen patients where it's, it's a balancing act. And you're saying to yourself, Gee, I, I, I'm not sure, but do I really want this person to walk out of this office without having been treated appropriately for Lyme disease? If I think there's a reasonably high level of, of likelihood the question is, what's the reasonably high level of likelihood? Well, and that's a difference of opinion between different Precisely. providers. And But I'd like to take that concept one step further. If I feel that clinically an individual raises to that level of suspicion that I'm concerned, then I will try a therapeutic trial of something like minocycline 100 milligrams twice a day for a month and see what kind of response they have. Are they getting better? Are they getting worse? When they get worse, there is a phenomenon called a jarish herxheimer response, which is an inflammatory response that is related to introduction of or, or, or change in antibiotics that was characterized in syphilis. I was just going to say, again, another ago. spirochetal issue. Another spirochetal When you said minocycline, did you mean minocycline yeah. or doxycycline? I, I use prefer minocycline, minocycline okay. because of its CNS uh, penetration. Okay. Improvement. And are, are you aware of any proof that yarish herxheimer reactions can occur after the second, third, fourth uh, antibiotic? There are studies that support the finding of yarish herxheimer in Borrelia. Well, now, no, there's no question about that. But my question is, there are patients who say, well, I've had multiple herxheimers. Yes. And I'm not aware of there being any proof that that phenomenon in, really in occurs the paper, after the second and third and fourth courses of In the of paper that I published, I do describe that. All right, so well, that's, that's described by the patient. We're, we're going to get back to this. Yes. Okay. I promised you we'll get back to it. Well, and, and but, clinically overseen right. by, by me as a I, I, I promise you we will get back.